so evocative, isn't it? Whether it's the sinister Howl from 2001, R2-D2 from Star Wars or Wall-E. The cinema is full of memorable robots, isn't it? Uh, it's National Robotics Week, would you believe? And at Loughborough University tonight, uh, you can really indulge in some of your favourite cinematic cyborgs. There are people who will predict quite happily that robots will ultimately take over the the world. Happy souls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, your guide, though, tonight is film expert and stand-up comedian Alan Seaman, who joins us uh, now. Morning, Alan. Good morning. Good morning. So robots are getting ever closer to everyday life. I mean, we're fully aware of them on production lines in factories around the country, but they're they're going to be more and more integrated in our everyday lives, you think? Well, apparently, this is what the experts say, don't they? They say that they're saying that something like 10 million jobs are going to go to robots, isn't it, in about 10 years? So we better all look out, really, watch our backs and find those. I think the best job to have is the job of making robots, by the sound of it. I heard an interview on the radio this morning about uh, a robot that's being deployed now to deliver fast food to people. I mean, whatever next. Well, so, you know, yeah, we hear about drones, don't we? There, there were some de- uh, designs about a sort of a new age football stadium I saw in the paper the other week where they were talking about, you know, you would have your, your food and your drinks delivered by drones. And it just sounds very space age. I mean, obviously, presumably you've got to go quite small drones, but the idea of a football stadium full of drones floating around. Dropping a burger in your lap is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Crazy concept, isn't it? So tell us a little bit about tonight. What what uh, what are you going to be talking about? Well, it's a kind of a potted history. You know, it's an hour and a half, so it's kind of a potted history, really, of robots in in cinema. And it goes really from the first days of, well, Metropolis back in 1927, really, as a starting point up until the present day. So we've kind of had robots in cinema now for a about 90 years, which is, you know, kind of interesting. They're almost the same age as cinema itself. So it's a kind of, a, you know, these technologies that have developed along the way. Um, really, and we're looking at fear of robots and how robots have become our our friends, or, or you know how how the fil- robots in films are affected by the the context of their times. Really, you know what what it says about the the the, the time when it's made. You know, and what the robots represent. Really, you know, you got in the 1950s. They're kind of the robots are you know, they're kind of Cold War metaphors and the robots or aliens are, you know they're, they're Russians or the Red Menace or different gender aspects of robots and uh, not just simply you know clanking men in silver suits really. Yes. Do you have a favourite? Um, well heavens <laughs> yeah probably the wrong trousers with Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the robot in Lost in Space can you remember? Uh, Robbie. Robbie. Uh, well no did he have Robbie well, Robbie was in the Forbidden Planet um, oh, then, maybe like, I'm getting confused. He was, he was pretty, pretty much the same because he was made and designed by the same guy. Um, and, 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 um, he, he was quite sinister, wasn't he? Am I right in thinking he, he went evil on them? He's a bit old, he's a bit rogue. I mean, they're all, they're, that's always a worry, isn't it? They're going to go rogue. This is the worry, isn't it? You know, they're, they're your friend, but for how long? Or until until the, the rust sets in, or what's kind of, <laughs> you know, you get to the Westworld scenario, which has obviously turned into a TV series recently, but then it's affection, kind of like a, an infection. It's like a, it's kind of like a computer virus. Sort of stuff. You know, that's 40 yeah. years ago, but it's like a prescient look at the idea of computer viruses, really, how a sort of a, an infection of some, sort, of some sort turns them against us. Absolutely. I mean, there have been so many from Terminator to... See, now I'm, you, you're bringing out the geek in me now. I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting quite excited about this, Alan. Uh, data from Star Wars The Next Generation, of course, not a film robot, but a, 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 a robot that appeared regularly on our screens, on our telly. Uh, arguably the best one ever. I don't know. What do you think? God, there's too many, aren't there? The more and more you think about them, there are um, an awful lot. But they, 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 a lot of them start looking the same. The more you look at them, you realise what sort of, um, you know, you get one or two that set up templates of, of how robots are going to look. Good stuff. Oh, the imagination. Well, uh... Yeah, imagination ran out after a while. I think, you know, they, they got a bit lazy. They'd look at the robot in Metropolis, and that was the setup of how robots were going to look. Or, or <laughs> Gort. I like Gort, who comes out of the spacecraft in the day that the Earth stood still. Um, regardless of the fact that he, you know. Just stands there, basically, basically and doesn't do anything. Exactly. Yeah, Alan, have, have does, fun yeah. tonight. I think it should be a really interesting talk. And, uh, and thanks for coming on this morning. Good to hear from you. Alan Seaman, there, is a stand up comedian and also film expert who'll be talking at Loughborough University tonight.
There have been so many. The Transformers. Oh, I love those. Are impressive as yeah. well, aren't they? It's, it's funny now because the, the kids are too old to go to the cinema with their mum, but it allowed me to go and see things like Transformers, which is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, but I have to go on my own now, which is a bit sad. Terminator, though, the original Terminator movie from 1984. Arnie as Terminator. That is the, the best. Uh, whether seen as a kind of an aid to everyday life or potentially evil invaders, robots have been a fascination for humans for decades, reflected in our love for science fiction. In particular, cinema has become a huge outlet for the human obsession with the possibilities of artificial intelligence. Next week, as part of UK Robotics Week, Loughborough University is, ho- is hosting rather a talk on robots at the movies. So why are we fascinated with our r 2 d and Warleys and Terminators and the rest. Well, Dr. Carmen Torres is from Loughborough University and joins us now. Carmen, good morning. Good morning. A very good morning to you and to everyone. It's a, the robots are fascinating. I mean, away from the movies even, there was that thing on Channel 4, wasn't there? For the life of me, the name of it's gone out of my head, where um, robots that look almost identical to humans are sort of doing everyday things, cleaning houses, doing personal care, building stuff. Absolutely. The androids and the robots, of course. The robots can can help a surgeon conduct better better surgeries in, in hospitals and they can also help uh, uh, minors uh, in, 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 in hazardous environments or in dangerous environments so robots are, are here and are here to stay and for very many reasons they, it's, a, it's great news that they are here because they are going to protect uh, society, look after the elderly and why not keep us entertained and, and learning every day and uh, we wanted to organize this uh, this uh, um, event as part of the the UK uh, robotics week portraying how we have uh, seen the robots in the cinema and how the their depiction through through the movies have perhaps um, had made an impact on our our perception of them um, i find fascinating the fact that from uh, Maria in Metropolis, 1927, mm. uh, through the 30s and the 40s, the robots were these strange and and fearful creatures who who were here to attack us and take over the world. But then later on in the 80s with Star Wars and and the 90s with Wally, etc., suddenly they became they became a friendly faces and and and. And very cute character that we could see in uh, in uh, on the screen and uh, and even feel feel um, emotion towards. I mean, so I think it's a fascinating journey that that we have gone through, and that's what we wanted to to present in this uh, in this event as part of the robotics week. I mean, it it, it intrigues me that, that that you know for such a long time and robots were were you know depicted in movies with a, with a head and arms and legs and off they off they go and do their thing. And then R two D two comes along with, not to be rude, but effectively a dustbin on 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 wheels. <laughs> but 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 in some senses, of course, that's nearer nearer reality, isn't it? Because people have robots in their homes now. Some people have robotic hoovers, and some people have robotic lawnmowers. And of course, they don't have arms and legs. They're just no. made fit for purpose. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that. Um Robots demonstrate how we humans can become attached to objects that, even though they they are not anthrop- anthropomorphic, even though, as you quite rightly say, they don't have heads and, and eyes or, or legs and arms, we can still feel feel connected to them because, in, in one way or another, are aiding us, are helping us in our in our life, and and this interaction that we've got with them is was setting up. Uh, Starting our our link with the emotional link, and uh, who doesn't feel attached to their phone, for example, or to mm-hmm. the or to their to their laptop or their or their favorite favorite gadget in the house. So I think this is a fabulous uh, example of of the, how the human psychology can can be can be connected to something that is is uh, from a from a human viewpoint lifeless, but. Other people may say, well, no, they, they can think to one extent. They can interact with us. So therefore, they've got a, a life, in inverted commas, with which I can, I can interact and, and, and develop a relationship. So there's a lot going on at the moment with uh, will the robots um, will the robots take, take over our personal relationships, you know, a girlfriend, robot or boyfriend, robot or, 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 uh, or partner. Yeah. 
So giving companionship, obviously, is, a, is an important thing for humans as well. So if the robot is there providing us with that companionship, there is a, a very interesting uh, conversation around uh, is that is that a, a, is a friendship relationship? Is, a, is, uh, is, it, is it really can be considered that way? <laughs> I mean, it is intriguing, isn't it? Because and, and I, I know that um, the movies have, have really done a lot with, with this idea of androids, which, of course, I suppose, are, you know, the, the, the most sophisticated form of robot, if you like, um, you know, m- machines that look almost and behave almost exactly as, as humans. And at what point uh, something becomes more human-like? That's something that, that movies have wrestled with for years. Absolutely. You, are, you nailed it on the head. In fact, there are the studies that demonstrate that when a robot is too human-like, it looks too much like a human, we, we, we reject it. We don't like uh, 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 something that we know is, 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 an, is an object to look too much like humans. Mm. So we tend to be, we humans, we tend to be attached more to robots or, or, or androids that look a little bit like humans, but not too much. We, I think it's because we humans want to be, want to stay in control of, of, or, uh, and I want to, we want to keep very clear who, who is the human in the relationship. <laughs> which, yeah? which is your favourite movie robot? I think it has to be Wally. I yeah. think it has to be Wally. Wally. Yes, I think it, it has to so be Wally. Cute. I think that the the way they portray the emotions yeah. through through movements of the uh, of the periscope or movements of the of the binoculars, I think that that has to be that has to be. It. Which one is your one? Well, I was I have to say Wally is only because it's my son's. He loves, but I'm I'm a sucker for R two D two. I love the fact that you know that he is so sort of ungainly in one way but it manages to just be a real warrior and get out there you know as if he's not climbing on top of a ship or unlocking things it just i think r2d2 is brilliant i think i think movies give us fabulous examples and fabulous they have introduced us to fabulous characters and mm. this is what this is the journey we would like to take our audience uh, on on uh, wednesday the 28th of of June yeah. at uh, at 6 p.m. we're going to be in the Cope Auditorium uh, in Loughborough University, uh, taking taking our our audience through through this fascinating journey of robots and androids in contemporary films. And everyone is is very welcome and, and most invited to that to that session that is going to be presented by uh, uh, Alan Seaman, who is a, a, a Lester, Lester man, film expert and, and a stand-up comedian and it's going to be great fun, everyone invited <laughs> Carmen, uh, enjoy it, have fun and uh, thanks for coming on the programme Thank you very much Thank you. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? what was that thing on Channel 4 that they did, I've watched both series avidly and I can't remember for the life of me what it's called uh, with, with uh, androids that sort of become more like humans either was it was brilliant i hope there's going to be a third series on that anyway um 28th of june uh six o'clock loughborough university if you